So multiplying matrices is uh, different than multiplying by just a scalar. So when you multiply two matrices together, you multiply the row of one matrix by the column of the next matrix, and then you add up all the numbers, and you put it in a certain spot. And um, so in the book, they have a really complicated formula with, with lots of letters and indices and stuff like that. So they'll say, like, if matrix A, um, A has these things are called the index indices, is equal to A11, B, or sorry, that's wrong, A11, A12, A21, A22, and matrix B, got, um, with a little <coughs> IJ here, is equal to a11, A12, but not sorry, C, B11, B11, B12, B21, uh, B22, and A times B, A times B is going to look like this look like in this box you get A11 B11 plus A12 B12 A12 times B A A11 A11 times B11 plus A12 times B21. You don't have to write this down. That's what goes in this box right here. In the next box, you get this row times this column and you add them up. In the next box, down here, you take this row and you multiply it by this column and that goes down here. And then if over for this spot, you take this row and multiply it by this column and add up those results and put it here. That's the operation for multiplying the matrices, matrices together. And they have a very long, drawn out formula with dot, 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 and it's very hard to know what they're talking about. So really, all you have to do is take this row, multiply by this column. The, so first row times the first column, and that goes in spot one, one, okay? And then you take the first row times the second column, and that goes in spot one, two. And then you take, um, am I recording? I'm recording, oh good, that recording. And then you take uh, the second row times the first column, and that goes in two, one, okay? And you add up all those results. So let me give you an example. Oh, the other thing is that if, uh, if A is an M, an M by N, matrix, meaning M rows by N columns. So this is rows, and this is columns. Col columns only has one L, right? I just put columns. See? I knew that. Come on. I'm just kidding. OK. Matrix and B. B is uh, N rows, N rows. Uh, by P columns, then uh, A times B, A times B has, is, is um, in, in rows, no, sorry. <laughs> is M rows by P columns, okay? Columns. In other words, these two numbers, the two inside things, this N and this N, they have to have, the, they have to be the same. 
Okay, so you have to have the same number of columns in your first matrix as you have rows in your second matrix. Okay? This number on the outside, it doesn't matter, it doesn't need to match anything, but the number on the outside, if you have M rows over here and you have P columns in the second matrix, then your result matrix is going to be M by P. I'll show you what I mean. With the it becomes, uh, yeah, it becomes more clear as you, as you work on, uh, on things. So if you try to multiply one that has a different, like if the first one has a different number of columns, and the second one has rows, then you're going to get like a, it, you can't do it, okay? You can't multiply them together. So those things have to match up. So, for example, if, uh, if A equals, so A equals the matrix, um, negative one, zero, uh, six, six, two, I made up my own examples. And B equals, not very hard to do with this time. B equals uh, five, negative two, seven, and uh, one, zero, three. One, zero, three. Then A times B, okay, like this, A times B equals, so the dimensions of that matrix, since this one is a two rows by two columns, and this one is two, two rows by three columns, my resultant matrix is going to be what? Two by three. Two by three. So I have to have a two by three spot. So it's going to look like this one. Okay? So what I do is I take negative one and I multiply it by five and I take the zero and I multiply it by one and I add those two things together. Okay? So negative one times five is negative five and zero times two, so I kind of take it and I turn it and I multiply by this column. Then I take it and I turn it and I multiply by this column and I take it and I turn it and I multiply that column and that's what goes in these three spots. So my first thing is negative five goes here. Then I multiply negative one times negative two and zero times zero and that gives you what? What goes here? Two, yes. Everyone see where I got two? Negative one times negative two, and zero times zero gives you zero, and that, and that goes there. Then you take negative one times seven, which is negative seven, and uh, zero times three, which again gives you zero, so you get negative seven over here. Then you take your next row, six, two, and you multiply it by each of those columns. So that gives you six times five, which is 30, and two times one, which is two, so that's 32. Hello. Okay. Can I use <laughs> We're in a recording session right now. So then you're going to take this row and multiply it by this column. So that gives you negative 12, 2 times 0, and so they're just negative 12, those are. And 6 times 7 is 42, plus 2 times 3 is 6, right? So you get a 48. Let's make sure that matches. Did I did it right. Did you get that? Is that hard to do? Okay. Now, what would happen if I wanted to do B times A? What if you can't do B times A, right? Because if I took this column and tried to make, do you see that? If I took this row and multiplied by a column, you can't multiply three items by two items, you see? And so it's because the number of uh, rows in, in B don't match the number of columns in A, you would get um, no, or you get like a mismatch. You get that thing on your, I'll show you how to, how to um, do this on your calculator in a minute, but you should, you need to know how to do it um, by hand too. So you, so um, uh, multiplying matrices is not commutative, right? So A times B is not equal to B times A. Even if you could do it, A times B is not usually 
except in certain specific cases, is not going to be equal to B times A. So uh, what if I had a, for example, I'm not going to give you one here, but say I had a 3 by 3 matrix, and I wanted to multiply that by a 3 by 1 matrix. What would my results look like? It would also be a 3 by 1 matrix, right? Because the outside numbers, if they, these two things match, okay? This is 3, that's 3, so you can multiply those. And then the <coughs> outside would be a 3 by 1. And he uses a lot to solve, to solve systems of equations using uh, matrices. Okay? Questions on how you do that? So far, easy. This cake? Yes. All right. Um, then, oh, we're almost done already. Um, properties, properties of multiplying matrices. Properties of matrix multiplication. Um, so you do have the associative property, so A times B times C, where these are all matrices, that equals um, A times B, A times B times C. So you can, it doesn't matter if you multiply B times C, first and then multiply that times A, or A times C first and then multiply by C. But the order does matter. So A times C times B is not equal to like B times C times A. So you can group them in any order, but you can't, you can't, like if you put the A here, you wouldn't get the same result, okay? And so that's the associative property. And uh, these are, these are matrices. A, B, and C are all matrices. Okay? And then uh, distributive property uh, works as well. So you can go A times um, A times B plus C is equal to A times B plus um, A times C. So that, and then you could add them together. So you could add together B and C, and then multiply by matrix A, or you can multiply matrix A times matrix B, and then multiply A, matrix A times matrix C, and then add them together, okay? Um, but you have to do it, you can't change the order of the letters. Um, also, kind of in reverse of that, A plus B, a plus B times C is equal to A times C plus, isn't that the same thing? B times C, kind of the same thing, right? So, uh, well, now I'm real. I could, I could add these together and multiply by C, which is the same as if I multiply A times C. It's kind of the same, same thing, okay? And then with a constant, so where this is a scalar multiple, so that's, um, what's that called? That's called distributive property. Distributive property works. And then this scalar multiplication where C is a scalar, C times A, B, where C is a scalar, meaning a number, Okay. is equal to uh, C A times B, which I could put that, I can multiply C times B and then multiply them again. So what that means is if I'm multiplying by a scalar quantity, I can multiply that first matrix by that scalar and then multiply the matrices or I can multiply that second matrix by that scalar and then multiply the matrices, which would be the same as if I multiplied the matrices together and then multiply by the scalar. Do you understand? And, okay? 
and uh, and then we have something called the identity matrix and it's kind of cool and it becomes very very important identity matrix and uh, it has identity matrix has uh, ones 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 along the diagonal along the diagonal I know from top left to bottom right and zeros everywhere else. So, uh, and it has to be, it, it must be, it must be square, okay? Meaning it has the same number of rows, rows as columns, okay? So one example of an identity, identity matrix would look like one, 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 zero, 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 one. So that's a three by three identity matrix, okay? And if you had a two by two identity matrix, it would just look like one, one, zero, zero, and so on. If you had a four by four, you'd have four ones going down the diagonal, okay? And what's cool about the, the identity matrix is if I take this and I multiply it by a matching a mat uh, matrix that has the same number of uh, rows as this has columns, then you will uh, end up with the same thing, okay? And I'll show you an example of that, okay? So, uh, so say I have, um, so say I have I equals, let's just do it two by two, one, one, zero, zero. And A equals um, negative three, two, one, um, two, zero, negative two, two, zero, negative two. What's my result? And I want to do A, A times, I mean I times A. How? It's going to be a what by what? It's going to be a two rows by three columns, right? So one times negative three gives you negative three, and zero times two gives <coughs> you zero, so you just get negative three, right? And then one times two gives you two, and zero times zero also gives you zero, so you add those together and you get two. One times one gives you one, and zero times negative two, so you end up getting the exact same thing. See that? When you multiply by an identity matrix. But you have to be careful because is that equal to, is it equal to A times I? Why not? What would A times I look like? You'd be trying to take negative 3 to 1, right? And multiply that by, by 1, 0, 0, right? In the first case, and then it doesn't match, right? So, so a times a times uh, can't do it. Can't can't do it. Okay. And the identity matrix becomes very important because when we find inverse matrices, like tomorrow or the next day, I'm not sure when we do it. When you multiply a matrix by its inverse matrix, guess what you get? You get the identity matrix. So it's kind of like multiplying by the reciprocal. You get the same thing, and that's how you solve um, systems of equations using matrices. You have to find the inverse matrix because it you'll see. But it's kind of cool. Okay. And then the last thing is that you can do is you can rewrite. You can rewrite a rewrite a system of equations 
a system. Of equations as matrix multiplication. And this again is setting you up to solve solve the system uh, using matrix. So say for example I have this system uh, 2x plus 2y, 2x plus 3y plus 4z equals 5, and 3x plus 9y minus 5z equals 0. And then you have 5x, 5x minus 3y plus 5z equals 9. And they say rewrite that using matrix multiplication. So the trick here is first to write the coefficient matrix, which you've already done. 2, 3, 4, 3, 9, negative 5, 5, negative 3, and uh, 5. And then you're going to multiply that by, guess what, over here. Nice. Do you, have you guys already done this? Yeah. yeah. X, Y, Z. And that's going to give you the constants on the right side. 5, 0, 9. Because if you think about it, right, take this and turn it. I'm going to have 2X plus 3Y plus 4Z, which is exactly what I have here. And that's got to be equal to this element, which is 5, right? And if I multiply this times this, I get... 3x plus 9y minus 5z equals this element in this in this matrix, which is zero, and so on. So that's how you would re you rewrite it. And then uh, I think tomorrow we're going to do some work on uh, determinants and stuff. And then Friday we're going to teach you how to solve equations and all the matrix. And that's uh, that's all she wrote. Okay, pretty easy, right? So your homework is page 528. Continued. 1 through 100 off. No, I'm just kidding. Um, let me see. I'm going to find it right here so that I don't have to write it. Index. Uh, pre calc. Advanced. Hey! Oh, by the way, um, there's a deadline coming up for see you succeed if you're going to register for this class at see you succeed. Did anyone do that yet? I think it's like the middle of the month. If you want to get college credit for this class, go to my website and it will teach you how to do it. I think the deadline is in like a week or something like that. Okay? Um, is this algebra one? No, this is you guys. Here's your homework. Oops. I have to update this tonight. There's your homework. You can see it right there. Make it bigger. And then I will stop recording. And I have